Google, Google it and see what, see, what come, see what you come up with. Matter of fact, go to it anyway, man. Because Jake don't like to do too much of any damn thing. <laughs> This is Exodus chapter 40, verse 38. It says, For the cloud of the Lord was upon the tabernacle by day, and fire was on it by night, in the sight of all the house of Israel throughout all their journeys. There, yeah, which he probably saw a similar thing, which the Most High controls the heavens. So that was a sign for Columbus to, to, to show him that he was doing the right thing, that he was going the right way. Because there was a couple of times where his uh, crew, for the most part, wanted to mutiny against him. So, I mean, that, that was a sign to lift his spirit up and to also uh, keep going. All right? So go ahead. Let's see what that says. Yeah, it says uh, St. Elmo's Fire is named after St. Erasmus of, of uh, Fome, also called St. Elmo, the Italian name for St. Saint Erasmus the patron saint of sailors, uh, the phenomenon appear. Uh, That's why he, when he saw those UFOs in the sky, there was about eight of them. He said, he, he said that's St. Elmo fire because he was a patron saint of uh, sailors. You see? So you see how everything comes together? Like I said, the reason why Columbus came to the New World, and they called it the New World, there was a reason why they called the New World. That's why in your dollar bill you have Norvis Autosiclorum under the, the uh, pyramid of, uh, they say, Kiops. Uh, Kiops, uh, uh, Kiops, I'm sorry. It says Norvos Autosiclorum, New World Order. Um, Antiochus Epiphanes called for a New World Order. Nimrod called for a One World Government. So, I mean, it goes, that's, that's, the, that's the spirit on the left-hand side. Which is spurred on the left hand side. Satan is working for the most high. He's doing the bidding of the most high. He's not on his own. Go ahead. Uh, the phenomenon sometimes appears on ships at sea during thunderstorms. And was regarded by sailors with religious awe. For its glowing ball of light. Uh, accounting for the name. Because it is a sign of electricity in the air. And interferes with compass readings. Some sailors may have regarded it as an omen of bad luck and stormy weather. Others reference it. Others references in, indicate that sailors may have actually considered Saint Elmo's fire as a positive omen, as in a sign, a sign of presence of their guardian saint. That's pretty. Yeah, good. which were UFOs that the Most High sent down. Okay, because. You know, prophecy is written, and prophecy then has to come to pass. So the Most High makes appoints certain men to uh, fulfill that prophecy. All right, else the devil wouldn't be here. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's go from there to uh, First Ezra, Ezra and the Apocrypha, the eighth chapter, and the seventy-seventh verse. Okay, uh, this is the book of First Ezra, eight, and. Uh Oh, I'm sorry, I got second Ezra. So lock it. First Ezra chapter 8 and uh, verse 77. And it says, And for our sins and our fathers, we with our brethren and our kings and our priests were given up unto the kings of the earth, to the sword and to captivity, and for a prey with shame unto this day. Yeah, so this unto this very day, uh, October the 6th, uh, 2012, we're still under our captives, okay? Unto this very day. So, you know, 1492, Christopher Columbus, uh, Antiochus Epiphanes, Alexander the Greek, uh, the, the first triumvirate, the second triumvirate of going back to the pagan Romans. They all took us down the same way. All right? Go ahead. This is uh, first, Mac um, first Maccabees 2 and 10. What nation had not had a part in her kingdom and gotten of her spoils? All her ornaments are taken away of a free woman. She has become a bond slave. Read that again. It says, What nation had not had a part in her kingdom and gotten of her spoils? All her ornaments are taken away of a free woman. She has become a bond slave. So we're all bond, bond slaves. 
and the she represents the whole nation of Israel. Now let's go uh, to Lamentation, the first chapter, the first verse to the seventh verse. Lamentation 1 and 1. How did the city sit solitary that was full of people? How has she become as a widow? She that was great among the nations and princes among the provinces. How has she become tributary? She weepeth sore in the night and her tears are on her cheeks. Among all her lovers she hath none to comfort her. All her friends have dealt treacherously with her. They are become her enemies. Judah has gone into captivity because of affliction and because of great servitude. She dwelleth among the heathens. She findeth no rest. All her persecutors overtook her between the straits. The ways of Zion do mourn because none come to the solemn feast. All her gates are desolate. Her priests sigh. Her virgins are afflicted and she is in bitterness. Her adversaries are the, are the chief. Her enemies prosper. For the Lord hath afflicted her for the multitude of her transgressions. Her children are gone into captivity before the enemy. And from the door of Zion all her beauty is departed. Her princes are become like hearts that are found that find no pasture, and they are gone without strength before the pursuer. Verse seven. Jerusalem remembered in the days of her affliction and of her miseries all her pleasant things that she had in the days of old. When her people fell into the hand of the enemy and none did help her, the adversary saw her and did mock at her Sabbaths. Yeah, so now they're making mockery, man. That's why they got you working. Well, actually, you don't even know when the Sabbath comes in. The only one that's breaking down the Sabbath the correct way are the, are the elders of GMS and the teachers of GMS. The Friday sundown to Saturday sundown is not the Sabbath. So you got these other Israelite groups that are, you know, call themselves celebrating the, uh, or paying uh, respect to the Sabbath, and they're going off. All right. Now let's go from there to uh, we just finished Lamentations, Second Ezra's, and the Apocrypha, the tenth chapter, and the twenty-second verse. Second Ezra, the tenth chapter, and the twenty-second verse. Second Ezra, chapter ten, verse twenty-two. Our psaltery is laid on the ground. Our song is put to silence. Our rejoicing is at an end. The light of our candlestick is put out. The ark of our covenant is spoiled. Our holy things are defiled. And the name that is called upon us is And the name that is called upon upon us, which are Israelites, go ahead. Is almost profaned. Is almost profane. Go ahead. Our children are put to shame. Our priests are burnt. Our Levites are gone into captivity. Our virgins are defiled and our wives ravished. Our, our virgins are defiled. Now you seen in the first uh, video clip of that black woman, she was obviously an Israelite woman. Uh, she, she's been defiled. Ain't no telling how many men and women she slept, how many orgies she, she attend. That was a freaky damn woman, man. The black, like I said, the black woman and the, and the Latin woman, man. Let me stop getting on the black woman. All the tribes are fucked up, man. And, the, and, the, and our women are completely out of order, man. And they're all in the lesbianism. They all play both sides of the fence, man. They'll deal with a the dude, then they get mad at the dude, then they get they'll get with their girlfriend, man. Then they then, then they want a stiff one. The dildo ain't doing the, the the justice, so they get back with a dude. Or sometimes they'll get with a dude and a, a chick at the same time, man. Our people are all messed up. That's why so many of our people. That's why so many of our people gonna die. Let me 